Here we're going to look at a pretty interesting little geometry problem. So what we have is a circle. I've given that circle a radius of r. So this is kind of arbitrary. And then we have a square with side length 2s. So you might say, well, why side length 2s instead of just s? Well, I think you can think about the side length as being something similar to the diameter of the circle instead of the radius of the circle. So this would be like the radius of the square being equal to s. I just think that makes everything work out a little bit better. And our goal is to find the intersecting area. In other words, the bit that's inside both the square and the circle. Okay, so let's maybe get to this. So I'm gonna put this into a coordinate plane and then we'll use symmetry to simplify it a little bit and then work from there. So maybe we'll put the origin right here. So that means something like this will be my y-axis. Something like this will be my x-axis. And really all I need to do is find the area that's happening up here in this first quadrant and then multiply it by four. Well, let's notice that this picture breaks up into three kind of obvious pieces. So it breaks up into a triangle like this, and then a similar triangle up here. We can argue that that is similar, again, just by symmetry. And then this thing right here, which is a sector of a circle. So that means we need to do three things. We need to find the area of this triangle, the area of this triangle, and the area of this sector of this circle. So let's maybe go ahead and give this thing angle theta. And finding that angle theta will be a really important step along this process. Other important step will be finding this point right here as well as this point right here. Okay, well, let's maybe see how we can do that. Let's first notice that using our coordinate system, since this circle is centered at the origin and has radius r, it has equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Great. Some other things that we notice are that since this square has side length 2s, the x value along every point on this vertical line of the square is equal to s, and then the y value is variable. That y var value is going between negative s and positive s. And then similarly up here, the y value is fixed at s and the x value is ranging between negative s and positive s. So what does that mean? Well, maybe most importantly, that tells us that this coordinate right here has x coordinate s and y coordinate something that's unknown. I'll maybe call that y naught. Great. Then similarly, this y coordinate up here has. And then similarly, this point up here has x coordinate unknown. I'll call that x naught and then it has y coordinate s. Okay, and so they're built like that because they're on the square. Now we wanna use the fact that they're both on the circle. So let's do that. So x naught s and s y naught are on our circle. Our circle, which is of radius r. Well, the fact that they're on the circle means they satisfy the following equation. So that tells us that x naught squared plus s squared is equal to r squared. But that gives us some nice easy formula for x naught. Notice that, that means that x naught is equal to r squared minus s squared. And then we go ahead and take the square root of that. And then similarly, we see that s squared plus y naught squared is equal to r squared for like a symmetric reason. But that means that y naught is equal to the same thing, the square root of r squared minus s squared. Okay, so I've summarized my picture up here. So recall that this point has the form s r squared minus s squared. This 
point has the form r squared minus s squared under the square root s. So that tells us that this triangle down here in the bottom has base s and it has height r squared minus s squared. And similarly, this triangle up here in the top is essentially the same, but the parts are switched. So that means we can start calculating the area of our goal region, which as we discussed before, was the area of this happening in the first quadrant multiplied by four. So just to reiterate that, we have the area of this is four times the area of these two triangles, but notice the area of each of these triangles is s times root at r squared minus s squared over two. We got two of them, so we multiply that by two. That gives us s times root r squared minus s squared. Great. Then finally, we have the area of a sector of a circle with angle theta. The radius of the circle is obviously equal to r. So just from standard rules about areas of sectors of circles, that gives us theta over two times r squared, where that theta is measured in radians. Okay, so putting this all together, we have that our area is four s square root of r squared minus s squared plus two r squared times theta. So that means all that remains is to calculate this angle theta. So it's a little bit tricky to calculate this angle theta like directly, but what we can do is calculate this angle, which I'll call alpha, and then this smaller angle, which I'll call beta, and notice that theta is equal to alpha minus beta. So here we have, like I said, theta is equal to alpha minus beta. And then Given the fact that we know these coordinates, we can write alpha and beta in terms of maybe the inverse tangent. So let's notice that alpha will be the arctan of this y coordinate divided by this x coordinate. So that's going to be s over the square root of r squared minus s squared. And then beta will be the arctangent of this where we have the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So here we have arctan of, now the square root of r squared minus s squared over s. Okay, great. So that gives us this final formula for theta, and thus the final formula for our area. So let's see, we've got that this is 4 times s times radical r squared minus s squared plus 2 r squared times theta, but theta is arctan of s over square root of r squared minus s squared minus arctan of square root of r squared minus s squared all over s. Okay, good. So next what I want to do is use an arctangent identity to simplify what's happening with that difference. So let's maybe get that formula on the board. So I think I've proved this in previous videos, but here we'll just state it. So the inverse tangent of x minus the inverse tangent of y is equal to the inverse tangent of x minus y over 1 plus xy. So that means that can be directly applied to this right here, which I have underlined in purple. So I'm going to make that little calculation off screen, and then we'll end with our final solution. So I'll make that little calculation off screen and we'll end with our final solution at the top. So after doing that very last calculation, we end up with the following formula. So we've got our area is four times s times square root of r squared minus s squared plus two r squared times the arctan of this object right here. So we've got two s squared minus r squared over two times the square root of r squared minus s squared. Now, we could just leave it like that, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a homework exercise. So there are certain values that could occur within this inverse tangent that would give us a nice simplification. So maybe let's try to look for some values of r and s that will make this simplify nicely. So maybe we'll think about the following facts. 
So the inverse tangent of one is equal to pi over four. That would be like one of the things that you could do is tool around R and S so that all of this turns into one. Now there are obviously other numbers that you can put in the inverse tangent that will give you nice outputs, but I'll let you guys find those. Okay, that's a good place to stop.